Welcome, creators, to the third Launchpad. Thank you all for joining us today from all over the world. Today, we will talk about hardware startups and hardware product development. We have fantastic speakers and interview partners, and I just cannot wait to start. Just quickly, why we are so passionate about Launchpad. Product innovation is the number one driver of future growth and defendable margins. Hardware startups and hardware innovation will help us solve the biggest challenges we are facing and can make our lives easier, safer, and more sustainable. You know what people say, hardware is hard, and therefore, there's a lot of truth to that. But we think that we, with a strong community and a good exchange, we can make it easier. If this launchpad today achieved just a tiny bit of that, we have all made a big step forward. That's why we created Launchpad, a platform for leaders and innovators to exchange knowledge, insights, and ideas. We are bringing together creators to discuss the challenges and the successes of hardware innovation and hardware product development. Before we kick up, off with our first speaker, Julia, our moderator today, will walk us through the exciting agenda and explain the basic functionalities of our video platform, Airmeet. From my side, enjoy this launchpad and i really hope that this makes hardware a little less hard thank you so much thank you simon for your warm welcome my name is julia and i'm the communications manager at creatize i'm really looking forward to joining you for the next few hours and i'm overwhelmed by the positive response to our event well Looking to our outstanding speakers, I myself am super excited about their inputs, discussions and new insights around the topic of hardware startups. We have divided our event into four sessions. Success stories from the best hardware founders. How to make a hardware invest uh, attractive de-risking. How to bring our product to market manufacturing. And our very successful Beersless Peer session already tested at our two previous launch pad. My tip? Put directly a beer or a drink cold for 6.15 this evening. Before we start, I have a little technical note for you. As you can see, we are using AirMeet as an event tool. A special feature of this tool is the ability to take a short break of 30 seconds after each speaker's input. It gives us the opportunity to bring the new speakers on stage, reposition the mics and start the presentations or videos. I'm telling you this because it's a bit unusual at the beginning, but you will get to know this, used to it very quickly. If you have any questions, feel free to write them on the right side in our Q&A and chat. We will try to address them directly or in our Bills with Peer sessions. So now enough about my technical instructions. Let's get started and jump right into the first session. We start with a keynote from Christoph Bornschein, CEO of TLG investor, author, and board member about asset-based value creation. After that, I'm looking forward to Stefan Klocke, shareholder and chairman of the advisory board of Volocopter on the topic of hardware is hard, as well as the views of Pascal Blum, CEO of UNO. Our guests will be joined by our CEO Simon Tuchelmann in our Berlin office and by our CCO Thomas Hofmeister. I'm really looking forward to our first session in passing to Mike to Christoph. Hi, Christoph. Hi, everyone, um, and a pleasure being here, um, first and foremost. Um, uh, it's good to <laughs> not see you all, um, and it's good to be um, on a new video tool um, uh, all and every day. So um, after having seen Zoom and Teams and GoToMeeting and stuff like that, um, it's interesting to even have a new one um, uh, on my apps folder. Um, and the complexity that we have is that we didn't align on who hosts the presentation. I don't um, know where the button for the presentation is. So um, I would ask Samuel um, uh, if uh, he agrees to pull up the presentation. Um, maybe this is the way to do that. That's, that's perfect, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, cool, so uh, I will basically say um, uh, the clicks. Um, uh, so let me just quickly um, uh, start um, framing that. And A, the question is, who is the guy and why is he talking about that stuff? Um, and that's a pretty valid question. Um, uh, Christoph is my name. Uh, you already saw that. Um, you see what I'm working. So basically, I do three things. Um, I run a company called TLG. Uh, which is focused on um, business models um, across global blue chips, um, amongst which there is the Fords of this planet, um, the Volkswagens of this planet, 
um, but even uh, energy suppliers um, and utilities, um, the Bosch's and stuff like that. So um, I would consider myself being working at the intersection of um, hardware and software, um, or as the nice German uh, research word would describe it, cyber physical systems. Um, uh, B, I sit on boards um, quite occasionally, um, uh, amongst which uh, there used to be the Deutsche Bank board, a supervisor board. Um, uh, there is the board of Lufthansa Innovation Hub um, and some um, boards in logistics and stuff like that. And uh, the third point would be I'm an investor. Um, I invest into um, a, a pretty tight hypothesis, and that is the reign of cyber physical systems. So um, B2B SaaS companies um, uh, and all and everything that optimizes production, supply chain, logistics, uh, really is what, what, what I'm all about and what I'm focusing on. Um, and that basically gives me the authority, if you want, um, uh, to talk about um, the topics that are now becoming. This really is kind of a me thinking out loud um, uh, session. So um, we're talking about a pretty early market, about market tendencies, um, uh, about things that we're seeing. Um, uh, and um, it, it will be mainly focused around the three topics um, of interest that I see right now. We see um, a massive rise of platform-based ecosystems. Uh, we see um, massive and growing profit pools of asset-based value creation that are more and more connected. Um, uh, so ecosystems, um, not only being software ecosystems, but being a combination of both uh, hardware and software ecosystems, and that will be um, talked about in a minute. Um, and then I'll try, and, and again, it's just a trial. It can just be a trial to um, give some outlook and recommendations on where the market is playing and going um, and how we will see um, the whole thing um, developing. Um, if you would click, um, we could just directly jump into um, the content. So state of the digital union, and that's a pretty European perspective, um, uh, is that we're seeing um, uh, that there is um, uh, ecosystem building um, and even governmental ecosystem building um, uh, on the helm right now. So Gaia X, um, who I believe um, is not existent uh, uh, even um, and only exists on PowerPoint, um, at least underpins um, the clear uh, position um, of the policymaker um, and uh, um, macroeconomical players um, to really build a cloud around um, production, to build a cloud around um, physical value creation. Um, and from my perspective, really underpins um, how challenging it is um, uh, to build a top-down ecosystem um, and to basically uh, just come up with an ecosystem and then hope that it's actually gonna gonna build out. Um, we see that there is massive alliance um, and massive coalition behind that right now. I still don't see um, the real world evidence and the real world use cases um, that this is actually going to push through. So what we're learning is um, the, the topic topic um, is pretty much on everyone's agenda right now um, uh, and is kind of invested into. I feel um, that the push through moment um, of really building something that is European infrastructure and European ecosystem um, is yet to become um, and will be massively determined from A, the board that um, is going to have Gaia X, and we're now in the process of uh, the selection, um, and B, um, the factors um, uh, that come together amongst um, 200 companies having to align um, on a, a certain ecosystem. So um, complexity of top-down approaches shown at a European um, uh, level. Um, and that is true for um, other countries. Um, so AWS hasn't been a top-down approach either. Um, uh, and no one tried that in the US. We just try it as Europeans. Um, going on to the next slide. Um, and I'm sorry to have kind of say that. Um, we see that um, we have a massive strive of button button up approaches um, uh, in cloud platforms and cloud ecosystems. Um, we see that um, AWS is quite obviously um, leading the pack, um, but there is other th signals on the way as well. So um, the investment round um, that just happened, I think, three days ago in Salonis uh, with a billion uh, pumping up the value to 11 billion um, might actually um, go into a direction of a more diverse approach um, that Salonis is going to take to business process mining and a deeper integration. Um, we see SAP being highly committed um, to b uh, business networks that integrate with whole supply chains and hardware. Um, Christian Klein on the Sapphire eight days ago 
um, just clearly defined and declared the um, dedication of SAP um, to build business networks, as they would call that, um, which um, in my understanding, um, and it's still re really vague uh, to a certain degree, uh, will include um, a production as well. So from the bottom up perspective and from a commercial perspective, we see that a lot is happening in there. I don't believe that we will see, and that is the most important point on that chart, the all-in-one all approaches, um, so the full solutions, um, but more a system of systems, as we've seen that um, in the um, uh, cloud infrastructure as well. It will be layer-based um, and it will be a multifaceted um, development driven by bottom-up with a slight chance um, of the Gaia axis of this world um, to really make a difference um, here in value ecosystems that connect production um, with um, a digital value creation, with sourcing, with procurement. But what is um, to be said is um, the end game um, at least becomes more clear the longer we discuss about that. What we'll be seeing is fully integrated, fully transparent um, uh, value chains um, that are connected by software, um, where software from a lot of angles um, that could push through in that is going to de determine the way value is created, hardware is produced, um, hardware is transported, and hardware is integrated into the next step in the value chain. Um, the, 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 the core question really is going to be, and that for you, Simon, is quite obviously the one question, who is going to be the dominant players for which part of the value creation um, and where um, will we see the, the value sit and the, the scale um, uh, being built, uh, fingers crossed for Creatize on, on, on that point um, of the keynote. Um, SaaS model um, clearly is coming um, uh, to the market in that field. So we're seeing discussions around industry equipment as a service. We're seeing um, discussions around critical infrastructure as a service. Um, I had the opportunity to talk to the state of California just two weeks ago um, on is um, the air condition in hospitals something that you could um, buy as a service? Um, so go away from buying the whole machinery into actually building uh, subscription uh, models and take it from the cloud if you want. Um, so what we're, what we're seeing is um, there is going to be um, a, a, a kind of um, allocation around cloud and as a service um, strategies, even in hardware. Um, what we're seeing is, um, and I was part of the team that created the Deutsche Bank white paper on industry equipment as a service. It is an early market. Um, there is a lot of hypothesis um, on where this is going to fall. So if we're going to see um, even parts as a service, which I would describe um, a, a cloud manufacturing um, as, um, it, it really is an incremental step-by-step um, -step change, always driven by the maturity um, of the user side. Um, so why aren't we quicker on that right now? And that, that really is from the kind of highest possible perspective, it is the um, uh, buyer um, and user side um, that in a lot of cases is still trapped in conservative thinking um, uh, and, and kind of protective behavior around traditional ways of doing things. Um, so, and, and I don't, I don't want to be overly negative about that. I get that because um, the shift of um, uh, getting a shop floor um, finance out as a, um, a subscription-based model or getting parts from the cloud is massive when it comes down to allocation of value creation and competitive factors. I think the core problem um, and the core hindering factor in that market as of now really is that the traditional producing company um, sees all parts of the productive value chain as competitive factor. And that is not the case. Um, the core question that we need to take on the kind of shop floor level um, really is what is it that really differentiates yourself? What is it where your value creation should be in production? And where should you leave away parts of the value creation um, that you would typically include in your own business model? And, and that really is something, so reallocation of competencies and reallocation of production depths um, is the discussion that we're now seeing um, going on on the market. Um, and my indication would really be um, we're going to see a healthy polarization of the market, the ones that are front runners and that really understand that as a service and cloud models, free capacity um, and free power and free capital in order to focus on the real competitive factors. Um, and the others buy 
competitive pressure at some point um, will lose their competitive edge um, by, by not jumping on the bandwagon. Um, so one thing is clear, and I don't want to be the one um, that now comes only with a burning platform. Um, it has to be on the radar. Um, it has to be tightly followed. Um, and what we're seeing is that the whole narrative that now sits in the capex to opex um, discussion is going to change the status quo and is going to change the way competitiveness is thought after um, even in the hardware industry um, that is a totally obvious and given factor um, infrastructure as a service products as a service will see that and that's a given um, uh, next slide please So, and, so and, and this is the most German way of saying things. Um, we see um, uh, uh, growth um, and, and, and we see the traction um, going up. So uh, what, 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 what this chart is only saying is basically um, from a market where those kind of new models um, were A, widely unknown and B, um, looked into with a rather skeptical perspective, we're now at a point where at least consideration is happening um, at a broader scale. Um, and that's the good news because I truly believe that getting this right and getting cyber physical systems right, so understanding um, the right combination between hardware and software is the one European question around European competitiveness and around um, the production um, uh, place um, Europe. So. Um, it's good to see um, uh, that, that we're now finally picking up um, in agreements around um, new production methodology um, and even acceptance in investing capacity and investing thoughts into, into that. So have finally established is the marked out word. Um, and uh, I would be honest and say that this is slightly over positive. Um, we still lead a lot of discussions where this all um, is discussed as if it, it would be rocket science, um, but we're getting there. We're, we're getting there that the discussion does not feel like aliens um, being part of a shop floor right now. Uh, that would be the fairest way to paraphrase that. Um, going to the next chart. Um, what we see is um, a need um, for um, standards and aligned interfaces. Um, and, and, and I really and deeply believe um, that this is um, one of the biggest questions. Um, we see traditional players like Lectura um, uh, positioning themselves in um, standardization and integration because what is um, uh, the, the, the core factor that needs to be solved um, if you go cloud or if you go as a service? Um, it is interfaces. Um, it's integration into really hard, heavy lifting stuff. Um, it is integration into ERP. Um, it is integration into sourcing. It is procurement platforms being needed. Um, so, so where are we going to see the next step of innovation, um, even in the short term, um, really is the interfaces and standards um, for systems being integrated um, and that kind of goes back to the uh, Gaia X um, bashing kind of, kind of a bit. Gaia X answers the question slightly with we are just gonna offer something that integrates all and everything um, so it does not need interfaces. I don't think that this is going to be the reality. What we'll be seeing is um, and, and, and again the business process mining world um, kind of shows the direction. Process connectors, process integration um, and standards that help um, connecting a multi OAM machinery on a shop floor with a cloud that delivers parts in real time into production processes um, where parts are coming from the cloud is, is going to be key to that. Um, so we're going to see a massive shift from proprietary um, uh, interfaces into open interfaces. Um, we see that all everyone is investing in there have um, uh, on the radar what is happening in the sourcing part. Um, that, that is really interesting um, to see where sourcing is going and integration of value creation in sourcing processes. Um, for example, um, in the chemical industry, um, uh, we now see that even formulation of products is going into the interfaces um, and sourcing platforms. So um, value creation and value integration um, in that example um, has to be built um, in order to enable markets um, to be driven by new models and new integration. Um, and this is where, where, where a lot of money is flowing right now um, and I would pay attention to. Um, it's not sexy um, and I know that, um, but it is necessary if you want to integrate a 
whole supply chain, um, you have to have the interfaces to actually do that. Um, and if you talk to port people, for example, um, uh, and I recently did that, uh, what you learn is that tolls are not integrated if you wanna um, ship stuff um, uh, on a digital form and we're still in a paper world. Um, we know that rerouting um, on logistics still is not consistently integrated and still is pretty much of paperwork um, in that field. So the whole model around cloud-based manufacturing will be driven by digitization of now paper-based processes um, and will be unlocked by that. So interfaces matter um, and the translation of a form um, into a digital process is an interface as well. Um, uh, have that on mind, uh, in mind and have that on the radar. Um, going to the next slide. <laughs> this is just kind of going back to um, uh, the, the, the recent announcement um, uh, on the SAP Sapphire. And the reason I'm, I'm putting this chart here is not to say that SAP is going to dominate that and it's a given. Um, it's just an indicator um, uh, since um, uh, the production industry is so much driven by SAP's agenda um, that even SAP is flipping towards that thought. So um, what we're really seeing, and this is again gonna, gonna drive the discussion around that, um, is that end-to-end um, -end thinking um, and end-to-end -end integration um, is highest priority um, for SAP. Um, and that only underpins that APIs and open APIs um, and deep integration um, and um, the, the, the shift away from proprietary um, uh, interfaces is even understood um, with SAP and SAP is still very, very credible um, in the production industry. So this is gonna create something um, uh, that, that, that is gonna drive at least the discussion, um, which is why I put it on that chart. Um, and it's just eight days ago um, that they sent the message of um, uh, a business network integration. By the way, um, another thought, what we're seeing is that CO2 accounting um, and uh, CO2 measurement, by the way, demands for full integration as well, because to measure scope one, two, three um, emissions, um, you need to have full supply chain integration um, and hand over the CO2 data. Um, so even green finance, um, uh, sustainable finance and ESG will demand for full integration. Um, so my hope is really positive that we'll see business network integration um, by um, a shorter time than we would expect that. Going over to the next chart and leaving SAP behind. Um, uh, and again, uh, what is the role and relevance of an asset-based value creation in the digital ecosystems if we understand that um, as, as um, fully integrated networks? Um, uh, that is answered on the next charts. Um, I'm just waiting for the next shot to be built. So um, basically what we see is um, uh, four different um, angles to look at the topic. So A, um, we have, um, and that is the stating the obvious and um, uh, quoting Captain Obvious, um, we see that um, uh, the, the asset creation uh, and real assets or hardware um, uh, is the real customer value. Um, so um, we, we will not see that um, assets um, will not be around anymore, but it is about right-sizing the allocation. Um, it is about asking yourself the question, what is it that needs to be with us? Um, and what is it that we put into the cloud um, and integrate into our processes? Um, and your compet competitiveness is at stake because what we're seeing in production is a massive push towards focusing on more topics, building new talent and stuff like that. The only way of carving out the right capacity, um, the right capital is um, to basically get rid of stuff that does not make you more competitive. Um, uh, full stop on that. Um, we see that um, uh, significant investment is needed if you don't right size that. Um, so producing the wrong uh, things in the right process um, is a um, malallocation of capital nonetheless. Um, and in that case, it's a malallocation of a lot of capital. Um, we see that data um, on three is, is gonna be um, really interesting, which basically says just one thing. You don't need to own the full production process, but you need to own the data that the full production process is generating. Um, and, and this is what I would focus on, not on putting more machines on the shop floor. It's a, how do we understand better um, how this all is going together? 
and end game, if you believe in the CO2 counting um, hypothesis that, that, that I just made, what is the CO2 emission of the processes is what you need to know, um, even though if you don't own that, because in scope three, you're gonna account for emission that you don't do anyway. Um, so full uh, transparency around your supply chain is a given anyway, doesn't mean ownership um, and all and everything. Um, and that is really the kind of thought that, that, we, that we see um, in the car, full ownership of production processes is um, going to shrink um, to a certain degree, um, which is driven by argument number four. Um, and that is if you centralize and standardize production, um, you can even do something good for um, the environment because you can optimize um, production processes for CO2 emission. Um, and what we're seeing across the board is a lot of producers will get issues once the CO2 um, accounting is fully rolled out because the production processes they use are just not sustainable enough. Um, so even um, the sustainability twist um, demands for centralization of certain non-value creating or non-competitive processes. Um, and I'm a true believer that this is um, going to drive the change way more and way deeper um, than we see that right now. Um, let's just jump um, slightly forward. Um, and uh, this is really um, going to be quickly. Focus will be um, uh, on um, operational agility. Um, and that's um, a clear one. Um, so how quick are you in reacting to um, VUCA changes and how adaptive are you? Um, uh, you are more adaptive uh, the less capital allocation you have in assets, but obviously um, so management methodology is going to ask for that. Um, economic efficiency is quite obviously going to be um, a massive question. So um, competitive factor or not um, is going to be the question. And in the end, ecological sustainability and production processes will be on the radar of all and everyone. Um, next slide, please. <laughs> um, so th this is the, the, the basic status quo of the research um, uh, when you ask um, Theo Munich um, and Anne Christine Achleitner um, uh, as, it, as a service is the answer of, as of now. Um, for me, the, the, the future of that really is going to be um, uh, asset as a service um, combined um, with cloud approaches, which are still um, really early on in the market. So you either have a subscription for a certain machine um, because you want to um, switch out um, and um, uh, take away the machine quicker than expected, or the part comes from the cloud. Um, I, I think that that truly is the future. Um, again, um, it, it can't be judged what is going to be happen, uh, what going to happen where, uh, since the market is so early on. Uh, even the as a service market is early on. Um, uh, I'm, I'm really positive about um, how this is all going to develop. Um, and if you go to the next slide, we're almost there. <clears throat> I also got the sign that we have one more minute left. Okay, so um, just bring me to slide um, uh, 17 then. <laughs> Sorry, there's a, the, the people in, behind the cameras are very strict with the time. No, that's, that's all good <laughs> because um, we, we're just going to talk about golden rules um, as kind of the last nice. slide. Um, so end of legacy IT is here. Um, uh, IT is from the cloud. Um, the end of traditional asset ownership is near as well. Um, uh, and that is bigger um, and better than expected. Um, investment that is taken away out of producing the wrong things in the right process um, will go into digital capacities and owning the software stack and owning the interfaces. Um, we'll see that a lot of production-based companies will want to invest into the software world more than they do in hardware. Um, so uh, reallocating hardware investments into software investments um, and outsourcing or buying as a service um, is, is, is going to be the, the imperative. Um, value proposition um, is really important. Not everyone is competitive in everything, even though you need parts, um, they might not be a competitive factor. Um, get a clear assessment on what is competitive and what isn't. Um, and then the answer is new and sustainable partnerships, um, uh, allocating software partnerships, allocating access to software players um, and even cloud manufacturers is one of the most important things. 
own the conversation um, and 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 get the conversation in um, because what what is going to happen to hardware is what what happened to to software based business models um, earlier on. If you don't take control now, you will be controlled over, um, and that is always the worst thing to happen. Um, so with that, um, I highly recommend to being part of the cloud manufacturing discussions and development um, and looking into that because. What we know is supply chain transparency um, is going to be the new normal. Um, traditional um, asset ownership is going to come to a point that is different from now. Thank you. That was the minute. Yeah. <laughs> Christoph, thank you so much for your input. Um, one quick question, maybe one quick answer. Um, what do you think? Like there was an, uh, a comment about that your, um, your statements are more directed to corporates. And how does this affect the, the like startups? Um, I think I, I think startups in, are in a, in a way better position um, than corporates are because um, uh, they they are basically building from the scratch and can just start understanding um, uh, what um, will be competitive edge and what wouldn't be a competitive edge. So legacy corporates um, in productions have the issue of actually getting rid of processes um, as a startup. You are in the luxurious situation to actually not even build them um, if they don't contribute to your value. Yeah, good. So you basically build a uh, like a new company without all the, the assets. You basically already buy them. Uh, oh, with only the, the assets that really make a difference. Um, yes. uh, so so and, and that really that that correlation between competitive factors um, and the assets that you really need um, can be built from scratch. And that's a good thing. Great. Then thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate this. And maybe you have the chance to drop by uh, in, in the Beers with Peers session at 1815. Um, would be would be amazing. So thank you. Thanks again, thank Christoph. Uh, have, a, have a great day. Uh, now I'm handing over to Tommy, who will introduce our next speaker, Stefan Glocke from Volocopter. I cannot wait to hear when we will be flying around with air taxis to Berlin Schönefeld. See you at the next slot. And remember, we just closed the session now, and then the next session comes.